Hey everyone, before we start this episode, we have a quick little announcement. If you've ever wanted to work with the Command Zone team, we have two fresh new opportunities for you. Yeah, some really cool stuff. If you are a graphic designer, we are looking for freelancers to help us out with things like thumbnails and all the graphic design work we do here. This is a remote position, so you can be located anywhere. There are links for that opportunity in the show notes. And then we're also looking to hire a full-time position for somebody to join our art department. Now, you would need to be located in LA for this job because you're going to be here in our office working with Lady Danger directly and the rest of our production team on all kinds of things like building our sets, wardrobe, costumes, things like that. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, again, all those links are in the show notes. All right, on to the show. Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks, and today we have a guest. It's Lady Danger. Hello, it's me, your favorite art director. Your favorite art director. That's what Lady's real voice is. Yeah, you- nobody, nobody's ever heard it before. This is an exclusive. <laughs> exclusive reveal of Lady <laughs> Danger's completely real voice. Uh, we have a very expi- uh, exciting podcast. Today, we are doing the Upgrade Precon Guide. Yes, for Sauron! Ah. Uh, this is the Hosts of Mordor precon. It is Grixis, red, black, and blue. And it's the bad ge- It's the baddies. Oh, we love a baddie. We <laughs> love a baddie. We're going to go through what's in the box. We're going to talk about the stats, break down the deck a little bit, and then we're going to add 10 cards and take 10 cards away to make this deck the best deck it can be uh, on a budget. A budget of... 50 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to big budget this time. We're playing around. We know if you're investing in these pre-cons that you want to make them as playable as possible. So we're trying a new budget this time. We're going to talk about some cards today. And of course, if you want to pick up any of those cards, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has a great inventory of cards. So you can always get the card you're looking for in the printing that you're looking for. Uh, I like playing with the conditions of the cards because you can get cool, expensive cards on a little bit of a discount if you take one that's a little bit more banged up. Uh, And Card Kingdom will put all of those cards into one tidy package and ship it to you in the mail, and it'll show up all together at the same time so you can get it sleeved and get playing at your next game night. Uh, Especially when I'm building new decks, I love using Card Kingdom because I buy like 20 25 cards at the same time and I don't want to be chasing them down in the mail and finding out which cards haven't arrived yet uh, or which ones got lost in the mail. Uh, So I trust Card Kingdom, especially when I'm deck building at the beginning of a new set season and this set rules. So go to cardkingdom.com slash command to pick up the magic cards you're going to buy while supporting the show. You can also support the show by using our additional uh, affiliate link at ultrapro.com slash command. Uh, We got a new set out, which means only one thing. New, cool stuff. Deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, uh, dice. I don't know what Ultra Pro has in store for the Lord of the Rings set yet, but I have seen their play mats and they are awesome. If you ever wanted to put Sauron across the table from your enemies... Uh, it now's your moment. Now it's time. Uh, we've got a Mount Doom playmat and a Sauron playmat in front of us, and they've got a huge selection. This is a huge set for magic, so there's going to be some awesome magic accessories going down over at ultrapro.com slash command. Support the show, protect your stuff, buy sweet magic, the gathering accessories. The final way to support the show is directly going to patreon.com slash command zone. That is a great way to make the command zone podcast better to make sure that we have the resources to make cooler and bigger stuff for you guys. Uh, If you like what you see uh, and you want access to some cool exclusive stuff like uh, our our behind the scenes talks after extra turns, every time we play a game, we talk about the game after and you can get those videos on our Patreon. Uh, Plus, we shout out one lucky patron every episode. And this episode is dedicated to... Becky Becky Wheeler. Wheeler. You rock, Becky. You rock, for sure. Thanks for supporting the show. Yay! All right, let's get into this box of magic cards. This is the Grixis uh, Hosts of Mordor deck. Uh, 
And like I said, we're going to put 10 cards into it. We're going to take 10 cards out with a total budget of $50. Uh, but first, we're going to get to know the deck. Yeah. Because you can't change a precon that you don't know yet. Yeah. And I mean, you don't know me for playing Grixis, but mm. you do know me for being a baddie. So yeah. I have to go with the one that had all the cool bad guys in it. They don't call me Lady Nice Lady. <laughs> nice Lady. Nice Lady. Nice Lady who is very safe. <laughs> lady safety, if you will. So let's get into it. Uh, this deck has two legendaries that could be the commander right out of the box. And the face commander is? The face commander is Sauron, Lord of the Rings. It's, it's That's the name of the book. You know, I think they got it. <laughs> <laughs> he is a five, a blue, a black, and a red. He's a, obviously a legendary creature, Avatar Horror. Um, when you cast a spell, a mass orcs five, mill five cards, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Trample, whenever a commander an opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you. Mm. And he's a nine nine, which I do think it's because of the nine Nazgul, I but I so. could be wrong. Each Nazgul gives him a point of power and a point of toughness. They're a beautiful family. You know, I think they really hit it out of the park here. <laughs> I I actually really like this Sauron because it like Sauron's such a powerful evil guy. Yeah. So it felt it, it it makes sense that he's, you know, what an eight drop to me. Yeah, it it, it super makes sense that he like he's the biggest, the baddest of them all and yeah. that like he's going to be expensive, he's going to mm -hmm. have something cool he does, but it's going to be kind of hard to play because like playing the bad guy is hard. Yeah, he's all by himself out there, except for the nine Nazgul, I guess. Uh, this so this is like has a little bit of a mass. This has a little bit of mill. This has Graveyard. a little bit of reanimation. And then whenever a commander and opponent controls dies, the ring tempts you. It's a tough line of text to make happen without a lot of removal spells or edict effects. Yeah, and and. The ring can only tempt you so many times, technically. Right, before You can move your ring bearer around, for those that aren't familiar with the new um, mechanic of the ring tempts you. But, I mean, it's still... I guess you really got to be killing a lot of commanders <laughs> to get you the most do, out of that. You do. It feels like you need alternate forms of the ring tempting you if you're really going to lean into that. Otherwise, this is going to be sort of incidental looting and incidental evasion. Also, the first... <laughs> phase of the ring tempts you is basically you give a creature skulk and this is a nine nine <laughs> so it's, you're still going to be able to block it like pretty easily all right uh there is a secondary commander uh as most baddies have they have a, a second in command and this one is saruman the white hand one a blue a black and a red so four all together for a legendary avatar wizard he's a two five whenever you cast a non-creature spell a mass orcs x where x is that spells mana value goblins and orcs you control have ward two uh, for those who haven't read up yet, a mass uh, basically creates an army token if you don't have one and then puts that many plus one plus one counters on it, giving it the creature type, uh, whatever the creature type is, and army. So this says uh, a mass orcs X is like create a four four orc if you cast a four 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 drop. Yeah. And if you've seen a mass in the past from the War of the Spark, it mm -hmm. is a mass X uh, zombie token or right. a zombie army token. You know, yeah, it's you a mass it. zombies X. Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically the same thing, but instead of making orcs, you make zombies. Which it does make sense for uh, Saruman to mm. make orcs because I mean. Yeah. He like, Saruman doesn't do the fighting himself. No, he Saruman sends does, his doesn't really get on the battlefield, but he does create like a huge army of uh, dum-dums, which it makes sense for what this one does. He also protects them, which is sort of interesting. Well, you got to protect your investments. Yeah, exactly. It's just good financial sense. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a four drop. It's a lot easier to get into play than mm -hmm. Sauron and it's a little bit more value based rather than like huge reanimator like big it, it's it's more of like inter inter incremental value rather yeah. than like a big swing in power um generally we like to see our, our commanders a little bit closer to four than eight, but oh, I, uh, <laughs> mean, I for sure do. But I mean, eight is still cool if you can find ways to, you know, cheat it out or things like mm -hmm. that. But it's yep. a cast. So, so it is tricky to cheat out. You got to get it into your hand 
Ouch. Uh, all right. Well, let's get to know the 99 of these decks now that we know our optional commanders, uh, which means it is time to break down the stats. That was my orc stats. <laughs> yeah. <voice>. Oh, I, <laughs> I see. <laughs> stats are back on the menu, boys. <laughs> Ah, yes. Oh, God. All right. Uh, so let us we like to break down the decks and just look at uh, the cards in terms of what category they fall into, uh, how the deck works, essentially, what the vegetables are in the deck. Uh, so let's look at the, these categories. Yeah. So we've got 13 ramp cards. Pretty good. Pretty decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got 13 card draw cards. Nice. We have 15 single target interactions. 15. Wow. Yeah. I know. guess if you're going to take out all those commanders, you do need it. You do need a, quite a bit of removal there. We have five board wipes, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. And then 38 lands. And it seems like most of these decks have been running around 38 lands 38 over the past few ones that we've, standard. we've gone through. So this is a decent balance of things. A lot of interaction, uh, 15, 15 single target interaction pieces is a lot. Um, that includes just uh, counter spells, targeted removal spells, graveyard hate, uh, or graveyard removal, excuse mm-hmm. me. Um And then even like edict effects would fall under this category. Yeah. We've also dedicated for this, obviously this deck, Mm -hmm. but obviously flavor. There are eight amass cards. Mm -hmm. There are six reanimation cards. Mm -hmm. There are 14 reanimation targets. So that's, uh, I, I took that number and that's every creature that is five CMC or higher. Okay. So any any creature that if you reanimate, you feel good about getting. That makes sense to go with Sauron. Mm-hmm. And then we've got eight self milk cards mm-hmm. and we've got uh, six spell payoff cards. Yeah, there was sort of a weird sub-theme of instants and sorceries going on in this deck. You don't say. With an eight <laughs> mana reanimation commander, there were also there's also a gutter snipe mm, in this deck. We love to see it. <laughs> So there is a little bit of spells going on. There's a little bit of orcs going on. There's a little bit of reanimation going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah. When I like sat down and really looked at all this together, I thought to myself, what is going on? Yeah. What is the plan (laughs) here? Especially when we do these budget upgrades, I... I like to simplify because I feel like sometimes a lot of these pre-cons just kind of, they have a lot of cool ways you can go. And then sometimes they're like right on the nose Mm -hmm. working with the face commander and you don't really have to do too much of like streamlining it. But this, I felt like I had to put the chains on everybody and pull them in (laughs) because I was like, you're going all over the place. So, you know, definitely tried to streamline it a little bit. I didn't get rid of any of the cool cards that that worked with anything, Mm -hmm. but um, yeah, it felt all, all over the place. Yeah, I I think the biggest thing about upgrading this deck is definitely going to be picking what kind of deck this is. Mm-hmm. Because like they do in Precon sometimes, they give you some options where it's like you could go more of a reanimation way uh, with Sauron or you could go more of a like wizardy spells way with mm-hmm. Saruman. And they gave you support tools for both. Both of them, yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely simplifying these categories, I think, makes a ton of sense. So looking at these statistics, who did you decide to put in the command zone? Ah, uh, Saruman, the white, which is ironic because there's no white on the card. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> if there was white in Saruman, I would be pretty surprised. This is like definitely Saruman in his evil phase. Yeah, it's <laughs> right before he was like, um, I'm really going to be the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. He's he's dealing a lot with like the fire and stuff. This look, I think this is in Isengard, right? It looks like a... Um, yeah, so he's, he's cutting down a lot of trees and he's, he's building up a huge army at this point. (laughs) Um, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, this is just, it lowers the curve immediately and Mm -hmm. it says a lot about what this upgrade is going to look like where we're going less reanimation, less big creatures and more integral, uh, value and also just probably some more instance and sorceries or maybe even artifacts only 10 cards only 10 cards (laughs) (laughs) by the end of this i was like i could build this whole deck over again and then i was like wait a second only 10 cards miss lady this is an upgrade (laughs) not a rebuild although both of these commanders are super sweet um so before we get into the upgrade itself we're going to talk about the reprint value in this box what are you getting what's your bang for your buck 
Uh, a couple of caveats before we get into the actual mm-hmm. financial numbers here. Um, these precons are more expensive than precons tend to be. Uh, the precons of regular sets tend to be like 40 bucks. Yeah. And then a little bit later, anywhere between like 35 and 45, depending on what's actually in the deck. Uh, but t- they tend to average around 40. Right now, the Lord of the Rings decks are going for about 55. I've seen them as high as 60. Um, so they have a high price tag they also have a lot of new cards in them Mm -hmm. uh for example this card only has 54 reprints wow where decks uh that come out with each set tend to have closer to like 70 ish between like you know basic lands and the new cards it's usually only about 70 cards that it's 70 cards that factor into this number Mm -hmm. so this has like 20 cards fewer yeah so it's very hard to compare this reprint value to reprint values in the past Mm -hmm. um yeah so but we we've done our best with some ones that have comparable numbers uh of course we cannot adjust for the different shelf price Uh, And the caveat we always make with these decks is we are taking these values at time of recording. So these cards have not been announced yet. When the when the reprint is announced, those prices will come down. So these aren't literal values necessarily. They are just comparable values. Yeah. Okay, that all of those caveats out of the way. How, what is the total reprint value of this deck? The total reprint value is $124.25. That is huge. That is really, really good, I think, for only 50 reprints yeah. in the deck. Exactly. That's a very high average yeah. price of, of the number of reprints, especially compared to what we've seen in the past. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've compared these to some of the commander decks that have closer to 54 reprints in them. Yeah. There are some that you know are, are like 60-ish, but are more of comparable. And they are low compared to that huge 124 dollar value the commander 2020 icoria decks were averaged about 96 dollars the 2021 strixhaven decks averaged around 88 dollars the commander 2021 forgotten realms precons averaged around 115 that's as close as we get to this number and the kamigawa neon dynasty which is sort of famous for having a low reprint value but also had a lot of new cards in it was around 72 dollars and 89 cents um yeah so that's huge i mean 125 dollars it it feels like you're really getting your money's worth i i mean i think so but i also like like I said, I've looked at this pretty in depth and mm. I love what they did with making it very flavorful and true to the, the books and 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 integrating mechanics that make sense to the cards. Mm. So it's really, really, really cool to like play the deck as it is just even without the upgrades going to be cooler with the upgrades. The, oh, wow. <laughs> I uh, and we're talking about the reprint value, yeah. right? Like this is these are the cards that already exist that are being reprinted. Mm hmm. But they have all new art. Oh, the art is amazing. Every single card Ugh. in this deck is Lord of the Rings art. We've never seen it before. So even if you've seen this card, you've never seen this version of this never, card. Never, ever, ever. So it's to me, it sort of makes the value of the reprints go even higher than a normal reprint. I think so. I I am a collector of the cards, mm-hmm. regardless of whether they're like technically good or not. I am an art sucker and like... Yeah. If it's got cool art on it, I am all about it. Right. And I love Lord of the Rings, so I'm like, well, I'll keep it all. Thank you. I know. I'm I have never done this for a set before, and I'm like, should I buy every card? Oh. Like all of them? Just to have them. Like I've never I even mean, thought about it. The devil on your before. shoulder. Yes. I know. I know. <laughs> but also no. <laughs> all right, let's get into the reprint value, the specific cards in this deck. Uh break down that $124 a little bit closer. We're going to talk about all of the cards more than $2. We're not going to talk about all of the reprints in the deck, of course. That would be a very long episode. Uh and for this deck, there are 15 cards that are more than $2. Woo! All right, so let's talk about the big ones, the $5 or more reprints. I all right, big, big, big baddie, reanimate. Ugh, Coming huge. in, sixteen dollars. That's 
really good. A great reprint. Yeah, it's. And I mean, look at it. it looks so cool. I mean, it's got, <laughs> it, that's Sauron, right? Like that's Sauron being reanimated. Uh, no, I believe that's the Witch King. Oh, but course. I could be of wrong. Of course, that makes sense. I could be wrong. I don't know. They're all kind of shadowy and wiggly. He doesn't have the whole Sauron helmet. Yeah. Uh, the next reprint is 16 bucks as well, and it is a much needed reprint. It's Treasure Nabber. Uh, d- this is such a fun card, and it's always been expensive, and it should be cheap and accessible, so I'm excited to see this reprint. I think this is a reprint, uh, that Jimmy Wong would be excited mm-hmm. about. It's Scourge of the Throne. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a big old baddie dragon, and, uh, we know Jimmy Wong loves dragons. Yeah, and that's coming in at $14. So that's three reprints over $10. I mean, sometimes I haven't even... We've done a few of these, and I've been pressed to find two over $5 in some gonna, of these. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm pretty stoked about it. Yeah. Um, our next reprint, mm-hmm. while not as expensive, still totally worth it, uh, Living Death coming in at $6.50 powerful it goes in any deck that wants to use the graveyard uh the next one is anger which is all the way up to six dollars and fifty cents blows my mind Mm -hmm. uh we've got a land reprint here uh drowned catacomb coming in at six dollars great reprint out there and these blue black lands are expensive the next one is underground river at five dollars and fifty cents so those are the seven cards over five dollars in the deck pretty great and i'm excited to see some lands in there oh, these yeah. are good playable lands that go into decks so um we're not skimping on the mana base this time uh we're gonna blow through these two dollar to five dollar reprints there are only eight in the, well there are eight in the deck which is plenty uh there's some familiar faces so we don't we're not gonna go through what they do we've got blasphemous act coming in at four dollars and fifty cents dragon skull summit the rakdos check land is four dollars and fifty cents sulfurous springs is four dollars and fifty cents that's the rakdos pain land sulfur falls three dollars and fifty cents basalt monolith at three dollars and fifty cents arcane denial at three dollars notion thief at two dollars and seventy five cents and of course Soul Ring, $2.50. It will not leave this list. <laughs> it will be there every time, but at least this time, it's very cool Lord of the Rings art. It is. The art on these are so cool. If you're a fan of Lord of the Rings, like every card is an exciting new uh, piece of art. So... A uh, lot of exciting reprints. I think there's plenty of value in this box, especially if you're a Lord of the Rings fan. But let's talk about the best cards in the deck. And that we're talking mechanically. These are the cards that when they're in your hand, you feel good. You feel like your deck's working. You you feel like all of the pieces are coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the first one that I picked for this uh, was Reanimate. Mm-hmm. It's an expensive staple in any black black deck period any deck that's playing um black in recursion and graveyard stuff it's just so 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 good and so strong and i was like it's the most expensive card in the deck it's probably the best card in the it's deck good for a reason <laughs> yeah i mean reanimates just the kind of card that does what you need it to do basically whenever it yeah. says put target creature card from a battle uh, a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control you lose life equal to its mana value uh, the big thing about reanimate is even though we're not going in a big reanimator mm-hmm. uh, direction reanimate can hit any graveyard yep you can get it from somebody else's yeah so it's just it's just a great tool to get back a creature that's putting in a lot of value for you or get one of your opponent's huge beaters yep really good what's the next one the next one is saruman the white hand and you might be surprised that i think it's one of the best cards in the deck but at least for me mechanically super flavorful Mm. very cool um i I mean it's just i all i can say is it's really cool and i think you know I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this type of commander and that I think we'll see a lot of decks being built around it. It's mm. going to be spell slingy and value and even a little, you know, a little great garden to bring back some of that st- like instants and sorceries and stuff. So yeah. I think it's probably one of the best cards in the deck. I, I, people love playing cards that turn spells like instants and sorceries into power, into yep. damage. And that's exactly what Saruman does. He converts all of your dirtily value into smash, uh, which is a ton of fun. And <laughs> if he's on the battlefield, you are making a big scary guy for sure. Uh, all right. We are going to get into 
this upgrade soon. But first, a few words from our sponsors. Citizens of Dominaria, I am Liberator, Urza's Battlethopter. Prepare to be liberated from hunger. Factor is here to free you with delicious, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals require a mere two minutes to prepare, leaving you liberated to enjoy the summer. Annoying trips to the grocery store? Liberated! Long cook times and cleanup? Liberated! Overpriced takeout and delivery? Liberated! They offer over 34 different delectable choices each week with options like keto and calorie smart to optimize your fuel intake. My favorite is the barbecue pork sloppy joe. It gives me the energy I need to liberate. In fact, liberating you has drained my energy, preparing to receive sloppy joe. Yum. Yum. Delicious. Yum. Head to factormeals.com slash command50 and use code command50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code command50 at factormeals.com slash command50 to get 50% off your first box. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. Yep, we're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs. And as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get that piece you've always wanted. And leave it up to the meticulous eyes of an eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay authenticity guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. So Jimmy, what's a game where no one wins? A Stax Mirror Match? Uh, that's close, but no, I was looking for the waiting game. What? Well, when you're hiring, waiting for great talent to find you, that is just not a winning strategy. So find them first with Indeed, the platform where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Why waste hours browsing multiple job sites when Indeed has powerful tools like Instant Match, which tutors for ideal candidates the moment you sponsor a post. Indeed's hiring platform just makes the whole process easy, helping you hire faster while only charging for applications that actually match your requirements. So with Indeed, everyone wins. Exactly, just like a Stax Mirror Match. Oh, what? Stacks is fun. I know for a fact you don't believe that. Or do I? Start hiring now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash command zone. Offer good for a limited time. Claim your $75 credit now at Indeed.com slash command zone. Just go to Indeed.com slash command zone and support the show by saying you heard about it on this podcast. Again, that's Indeed.com slash command zone. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Hey everyone, we are super excited to announce that we are now sponsored by Architect. Architect is the perfect place to build and store decks online, whether you want to build from scratch or catalog your collection. Everything is easy and intuitive. It's got the same feeling as when you sit at the table with your cards laid out right in front of you. Then, once your deck is done and ready to go, their built-in play tester is a great tool to make sure your brews work as intended. And, now that Architect has partnered with EDH Rec, they have all the resources and data they need to really refine and perfect the platform. So even if you've tried Architect in the past, it's definitely worth taking a new look right now. Just go to architect.com and start brewing on the best deck builder out there. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T.com. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking around. We are going to upgrade the hosts of Mordor precon today. And we've upped the budget this time. We are using 50 dollars to make this precon as powerful as possible. Uh, for your next game night. So when you're playing, you know, Saruman, when you're bringing the baddie, that you actually have a powerful deck that doesn't, you know, just feel like a precon necessarily. Yeah. So a lot of the cuts that we're going to be making today are to streamline the deck, as said before. That's what I try to do. <laughs> yeah. We're focusing on Saruman. We're sort of pushing past Sauron. He's a little too expensive. And... Uh, it, Reanimator's tough on a budget. Oh, on a budget is so... Especially, yeah. I think the emphasis, like, you can do it on a budget, but when you only have 10 cards, yeah. it's very hard to do. Yeah. I uh, I like the choice of, of going with Saruman here. I think he's going to be a more popular commander just because he is so much lower CMC. So, uh, let's do it. Let's talk about the cards to add. The most fun part of this. We're going to spend that $50 budget... Uh, 
Wait, you said 50? I thought you meant five. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first category of cards that you've added are amass cards. Ways Duh. to really support the Saruman amass ability. Uh, I'm a big fan of the amass uh, ability. It was super great uh, during Limited and War of the Spark. Mm-hmm. And I loved seeing it come back. And I was like, oh, there's definitely some really cool amass cards we can add in here. And I did it. I added some of them. I would have liked to add more. But, you know, 10 cards. I did what I could. <laughs> um, the first card that I thought was really cool was Angrath, Captain of Chaos. Mm-hmm. I was like, this man gives my creatures menace and I can amass on it. And I was yep. like, I'm in. I'm here for it. And it was only 25 cents. It, it's a great way to spend just a tiny amount to give like, especially this big thing that you're making every turn. Like you cast Angrath, you make a 4-4, four, four, you amass, you make it a 6-6, six, six, and the next turn when you attack with this thing, you're attacking with minimum of a 6-6 six, six menace. That's hard to block. Yeah, and especially that's early. Yeah, that's if you didn't cast any spells. Yeah. I think um, the next card that I added was Widespread Brutality. It's an amazing board wipe. Uh, it's a, I guess I could t- I could tell you what the card does. Yeah. Um, the card is one, a black and two red. It's a sorcery and a mass is two. Then the army you amassed deals damage equal to its power to each non-army creature. It's great. So it's like everybody, like mostly you'll have a lot of armies out. You will have regular creatures out as well. But I mean... Yeah, it's uh, it's so generally we're going to talk about the exception to this rule, but generally you can only have one army in play at a time. Mm-hmm. So if you cast this with Saruman on the board, you'll amass four because it's a four four drop sorcery. Yep. And then the spell will resolve. You'll amass two more. So mm-hmm. you'll have a minimum of a six six. Yep. And that's if you haven't done anything with Saruman before. You'll wipe the board and have this huge thing all on its own free to hit. Uh at least mostly wipe the board. It'll it, mostly, it's going to do a ton of damage. Yeah, unless people have other army creatures, mm. then it will wipe most of the board and yeah. you'll be free to just widespread brutality on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plus, it is only 50 cents. We love to see it. And something that could hypothetically make all of your creatures armies is a Maskwood Nexus coming in at four. It's an artifact. Creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And you can also pay three to tap it, create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter creature token with changeling, which means it's also every creature type. This card is sweet in the deck. Uh, for It's $3.50. Yes. Uh, and it does a few things. Yes, it does. So <laughs> Tell them, Rachel. Tell them what it does. Well, the, the first thing is Saruman says goblins and orcs you control have warp too. Yep. So it turns Saruman into an orc and, and a goblin, actually. And it will give Saruman and all of your other non-goblin and orc creatures ward too. Which is nice. Very powerful. But it also turns them all into armies. Yes. Which means every time you amass, you can choose... Which one it goes on! Which army to buff up, including Saruman, including your regular army, including any other creatures you have on the battlefield. It's like, um, when I first saw it, I was like, oh, great, I can just do it and give everything hexproof. And then as we dug into it, I was like, it turns it into army tokens, too. So I was really, really excited uh, when I came upon that as well. Yeah. I mean, you think, like... The ultimate combo you you get you turn everything into armies and then you widespread brutality and you're like well oh, i'm no. totally fine what happened and i'm very much of like i love building small little fun combos mm. that are good but also kind of just for me like if yeah. it happens you're like yes i did the thing mm. um and that's definitely one of the yes i did the things i mean it's so it's so fun if you have a couple of creatures on the board a masquerade nexus really helps you go crazy and just putting more and more counters on each of your creatures Mm -hmm. all right uh we decided to go in a more instance and sorcery focused deck that seemed really exciting to me uh and it had some uh it had some support in there there were six spells payoffs or non-creature uh payoffs in the Mm -hmm. deck so we wanted to bulk up this section just a little bit yeah 
So the first instant or sorcery support I put in there is Archmage Emertus, which is two and a blue blue. It's a creature, but it has magecraft. So whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. It is great value if you're already going to be casting instants or sorcery. Mm-hmm. It's just real solid draw for only five bucks. It's like, it just keeps you churning through your deck. Mm -hmm. So you can always find another non-creature spell to cast with Saruman. Exactly. Um, Which really helps in these sort of stormy decks that really want to cast a lot of spells. Mm Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, This next one is more support for the instants and sorcery category. Uh, It's Wizards of Thay. Mm Mm-hmm. This is a fun one. Uh, it's, I'll, I'll read it. A wizard of Thay is a human wizard for three and a blue. It has myriad and it says instants and sorceries you cast cost one less to cast. And then you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. I know at least for this specifically, you want to cast high, like high mana value, high mm. mana cost, uh, instance or sorceries. And I was like, okay, well we want to keep those but let's make them cheaper mm. so you still get the amass value yeah. while being able to cast them. And so, and plus, when I looked at it, there were a lot of sorceries in the deck. There mm. were, you know, I think six or so instants. But um, I, I, I was like, how do you cast sorceries at instant speed? Yeah. It's te- I think this card does a ton of work in the deck. Um, for those who, who haven't played against Wizards of Thay, it is Myriad, so you attack with it, you make two token copies, mm-hmm. and then in combat, all of your spells cost three less because you have three copies of Wizards of Thay. Uh, but it also just statically gives all of your sorceries, you know, the they cost one less, and flash. Yep. So if you have like a four drop or something like that, it's that's better on your opponent's turn. You can cast it on your opponent's turn. A lot of the time, sorceries are a little bit more expensive and not instants because they are very strong. So right. being able yeah. to utilize and capitalize on that is something I was very interested in doing. Yeah. And it's just a buck fifty. Love it. Woohoo. Uh, this next one takes up a chunk of the budget. Worth it. Worth every single $13 of it. Mm -hmm. It is Primal Amulet. It is four to cast. It is an artifact. It says, instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Primal Amulet. Then if there are four or more charge counters on it, you may remove those counters and you transform it into... Primal Wellspring. This land is so powerful and it turns your like instance and sorcery reduction into a land that says add one mana of any color to your mana pool. When that mana is spent to cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. So there's a lot of big, powerful sorceries in this deck. Yes, there are. If you are. can cast them twice, that is such a huge swing. There's like, there's so many big, like, mill two and reanimate. This one makes a 6-6 six, six black and red dragon, dragon creature token yep. that steals artifacts. Like, if you can double up some of these big, powerful, baddie sorceries, mm-hmm. you're going to run away with the game. I sure hope so. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Uh, I like this next guy with um, with Saruman's ability a lot. Yeah. It's Unhello the Painter. It's blue, black, and red for a 1-3 vampire assassin with death touch. It says the first instant or sorcery you cast each turn has casualty two. If you weren't around for new Capenna, casualty means that as an additional cost to cast the spell, you may sacrifice something with that power or greater. So in this case, two power or greater, and you can copy the instance and sorcery that you cast. Uh, so it doesn't work on, you have to have an army token in play yeah. to do it because you can't cast a copy, make an army, and then sack it for the instance and sorcery you just cast. It's not how it, how it works. But if you have like a 3-3 three, three army or something like that, and you cast uh, one of these big spells, you can sacrifice your 3-3 three, three army. You're going to make a big one mm-hmm. after that, and you'll get two copies of the instance or sorcery. Which means you will get more uh, counters to put on your army token. Yeah, uh, the copy won't give them counters because you didn't cast that. Oh, but the I lied. Yeah, but the, you still cast this first one and then get two copies of that. Not as many counters, but Not as many. still good. Doubling up on these huge, powerful uh, sorceries that we've been talking about uh, is huge. So 
Um, when I first th- did this, <laughs> I came to Rachel and said, Rachel, what if I just put in bad guys? What if I completely re- disregarded <laughs> everything else? And I, <laughs> I made the internet really mad and just put in bad guys. And I was, then I thought about it and I said, that's a really good idea if I was building this deck from the ground up, yeah. but I'm not. So... I only put in a few bad guys, <laughs> and Grath <laughs> being one of them. But uh, Jenga Texas Progress Tyrant being probably the baddest of them all. Uh-huh. Um, they are five and two blue. It's a legendary creature, Phyrexian Praetor. Um, whenever you cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers uh, only once each turn. And then whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant, or sorcery spell, counter that spell this ability triggers only once each turn yeah. um very <laughs> he rude he 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 bad and he's six bucks and he's six dollars <laughs> i lo- actually love jenga taxius in this deck um because we are removing some of the reanimator stuff mm-hmm. but not all of it not all of it there's still like reanimate still staying in the deck there's a couple of reanimation spells that are just great to reanimate Archmage Emertuses or Wizards of Thay or Jenga Taxius, which yes. is huge, big, bad that doubles up your great spells and then is you can reanimate from the graveyard. And counters everybody else's and stuff. It's going to counter their soul ring. It'll counter all of their other cool artifacts and yeah. instants and sorceries. And uh, when I was like, man, oh, I was like way under budget. And I was like, what can I do? And then I was like, oh. <gasps> Jenga taxes, <laughs> which is something I probably have said once, one other time in my life. Yeah. But I mean, hey. Jenga taxes. <laughs> I think I was scared that time. This time I was excited. This is this next one is a bit of a nonbo, and I will admit I added it. Oh, she held. I was like, oh, I need one more, and then. But this card's great. Uh, it's Leer, Disciple of the Drowned. It's three blue blue for a human wizard. Spells can't be countered, so it does turn off the. Bad, bad part of Jenga Taxius. But I think when but you it have it But it keeps the your, good part. <laughs> yeah, it keeps the good part. But I also think, like, you're not going to play both of these at the same time. Right. You're yeah. going to put the biggest target on your back. And right. And you're going you're gonna to turn <laughs> off some of your stuff. So I think it's utilized at it's a different time. It's still fine. Uh, but Lear also says each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. Flashback is equal to that card's mana cost. And it's a 3-4 a human wizard. Lear, uh, when you're trying to cast all of these instants and sorceries, you really want to just take advantage of all of every card to its fullest. So casting them from the graveyard and making sure you can get those, you know, a huge army, even bigger. Um, and, you know, every it makes every instant and sorcery count as two. Honestly, yeah. Which is real solid, especially if you can double them up with the cards that we have added previous. And it's uh, $7, so it's pretty expensive. So you know it's probably worth its value being able to get those instants and sorceries back out. They're good. I like it a lot. The um, last card I added, which... I may or may not be known for at this point. (laughs) It's Sir Conrad the Grim, another bad guy. He's a baddie. He's a big baddie. Um, He is three and a black, black legendary creature. Whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent and then you can mill. You can play one and a black and mill uh, each player. Now, I picked this because it's a very strong card. Mm-hmm. It, it sometimes can win games, but also there, the package itself provided a lot of mill in it already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we so, mentioned there's a number of self-mill cards. Exactly. So I didn't feel eight. so... There's eight self-mill cards. You are putting stuff in your graveyard. You are bringing stuff out of your graveyard. There's a living death and a lot of reanimation spells. Uh, I think Sir Conrad is a great like just backup plan. Yeah, I, I like having backup plans. I like having options. And when I'm trying to simplify a deck, having a couple different options to kind of get you in there, mm-hmm. I think is totally worth putting it in there. Um, so I was very excited to put it in yeah. It's also good with on Hello when you're sacrificing your army token over and over to copy stuff. Um, so there's some there's some neat little synergies in there. Plus, we are under budget. Yes. Those are the 10 cards we're adding, and they cost a total of $38.75. No problem. And they really streamline what the deck wants to do. Yeah. I mean, I do have some very expensive honorable mm-hmm. mentions that I would have loved to put in there. Uh, Rise of the Dark Realms being one of them. 
Yeah, we decided since the budget's so big that we were like, all right, let's throw in some splurge cards where it's like, you know what? I'm obsessed with this deck. I want to really invest in it. Yeah. We're going to blow out the budget for a couple of cards. That would be cool. And Rise of the Dark Realms is up to $22. It's so exciting. I, w- I wanted to put it in there, yeah. but then I saw it was $22 and I was like, the internet will rip me apart if I spend 50% <laughs> of my budget on one card. <laughs> the other card that I think... If you want to, and this is your style of play, Rhystic Study, it's a $45 card at this point, but it does do exactly what you want it to do. Mm-hmm. It's going to get cards in your hands, so you have instant sorceries to cast, if you're lucky, at instant speed, at flash speed. So, I mean, it's never bad to have more card draw mm-hmm. and have a full grip of answers, responses, and things you can do. Yeah, I think um, taking this uh, more instant and sorcery direction does make it a little bit more controlly and Rhystic Study makes sure that you always have the answers to the problem that's on yep. the board. Yeah. Uh, can't beat it. 45 bucks. And there's someday been a, it'll be less. Someday Hopefully. it'll be less, but now there's all co- like cool reprints of it and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm very excited. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, we've added 10 cards to the deck, which means we have to do the worst thing in Commander, which is take 10 cards out. <laughs> this is the last thing I did. <laughs> I, I put the 10 cards in first, and then I was like, it's what do so I get rid of? brutal. Uh, okay, so what are the 10 cards that are uh, we're, are making way for the cool new ones we're adding? So the 10 cards I'm getting rid of are Shiny Impetus. Impertus. Impetus. In, impetus. Um, I'm getting rid of Basalt Monolith. Yeah, Basalt Monolith is, it, you don't need as much ramp as they put in. You've, you've no. taken the 8-drop commander out of the command zone, and you've put it in a 4-drop. And they have 15 sources of ramp still. So I think cutting some ramp is perfectly fine. <laughs> I justified it. I said, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, sometimes I make cuts just for myself and for nobody else. But I think you know this what? is still... I want it out. Uh, yeah, no, that know, makes I, sense to me. Yeah. Um, this one was hard for me to cut mm-hmm. because I, I liked it. And there are a lot of, uh, we put a lot of cost reduction in it. But I... I, I think it had to go. Subjugate the Hobbits. Um, it's a new card. Mm-hmm. Um, it is five, six, seven mana. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorcery, gain control of each non-commander creature with mana value three or less. When I really thought about it, at the point in time when you're going to be playing this in the game, people have, like, they have cast things that cost more than three mana. Mm-hmm. So I was like, well, how much stuff will you actually get? Um, so, And it does that make seven mana difference in the game. Yeah. And yeah. I would rather use that seven mana on something else. Yeah, seven mana should win the game. It's not uh, supposed to get you some value creatures. Yeah, no, nope, don't want that. I get it, get it out of here. Maybe it's sweet. Maybe it's sweet in your games. Let us know. Um, the next one I cut was Monstrosity of the Lake. It is four and a blue. It's a legendary creature. When Monstrosity of the Lake enters the battlefield, you may pay five. If you do tap all creatures your opponents control, then put a stun counter on each of those creatures. For those that don't know how that works, if a permanent with a stun counter would become untapped, remove one, which would be the stun counter, from it instead. It also has island cycling. It's a 4-6. It's very cool. Mechanically, mm-hmm. very cool. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. It's, so this is interesting. It's a five mana creature, but if you don't cast it for five mana, it's, if you cast it for five mana, it's a 4-6. Yes. It has no text on the battlefield. Nothing. So you could island cycle it, draw an island. You could cast it for five. It's a vanilla 4-6. Or you pay five and kick it, and then it's this great thing. Mm-hmm. But it's sort of not a great thing unless you have 10 mana and, if you have and ten, a board state. And as we said, if you have 10 mana, you want to win the game. And again, we're moving this deck from being a, a focused reanimator deck mm-hmm. to more of a value reanimator deck with instant and sorcery synergy. So this kind of thing is just too expensive. The next one that I really, really had a hard time get your, deciding. Get your keys ready. Yeah, you're going you're gonna <laughs> to tell me in the comments how you feel. I cut... Sauron, Lord of the Rings. That is such a power move. I mean, checkmate, no. baby. But <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's really cool. It is very flavorful. I loved it. And it was the last card I cut. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, maybe I won't do it. I might m- make some people angry. But ultimately, it's so expensive. And it doesn't necessarily align with what I want to do. Like, sure, it does not mass and things like that. and you, But... It's just so expensive. I can't, I couldn't justify keeping it in here when I could have kept a really cool instant or sorcery instead. Mm. Um, So I'm sorry for those that I have angered, but it had to go. 
cutting the Lord of the Rings himself. It makes a ton of sense. This is really expensive. You don't want to spend eight mana to cast something that doesn't make your army any bigger, that doesn't synergize with a lot of your spells. And it's th- this reasoning is going to apply to basically the rest of the cuts. Yeah. Like the there there's a number of, of creatures that are getting cut. And I think something to recognize with this cut and the rest of them is sometimes you cut a good card Mm -hmm. because it's not good in this deck or it's not good with your plan with the plan like you're building a spellslinger deck if you're building it from scratch you're not adding certain cards to it so even if you're like Sauron's sick you're like i get it but it's not sick in this version so it makes sense to me yeah so so take it as you will um i did i did it yeah. I took them down. Can't undo it. I can't. Uh, you can undo it for yeah. your own deck, but for mine, you can't do it. <laughs> um, the next thing I got rid of was Rampaging War Mammoth. It is also a seven drop. It's five, a red, red. It's got Trample, Cycling, X2, and a red. And then when you cycle Rampaging War Mammoth, destroy up to X target artifacts. Mm-hmm. I didn't notice there was a lot of artifact hate and removal He's gotta in the get deck. rid of all those rings he made <laughs> <laughs> get out of here He's, he wants them back um and it wasn't a direction that i really was interested going in it's probably going to v- be very useful Great a lot of those cards decks. and reanimator decks and even just you know you got a dock side across <laughs> across the street mm-hmm. you're coming to get it you know <laughs> um so i cut it i, I put in a cooler instant sorcery and it's I think I think that's fair. We're again we're going for synergy here, uh, and that goes for this next one too. It's Inferno Titan. Uh, it's a six drop. When it enters the battlefield, you deal three damage. Uh, it enters the battlefield or attacks. It deals three damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. It's a great card, especially if you're blinking it or reanimating it, or you're doing like big creature stuff. It also has fire breathing. I always forget about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it's not great in this deck anymore. Nope. Uh, the next one I got rid of of. Uh, was Troll of Khazad-dûm. Um, very cool. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, it's a very cool card. A Troll of Khazad-dûm can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. And it has Swamp Cycle. A lot of cycling in yeah. this. Very interesting. Um, yeah, it's like a sub-theme in the main set, I believe. Mm-hmm. I believe this This is a main set card. Uh, so there, there's like a ton of them mm-hmm. that that cycle and get like get your fixing done because there are so many legends yeah. that I think they're really leaning on cycling for fixing. So expensive mana cost, big guy, totally would probably work with Sauron, Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. but I was not interested in it for Sauron. Um, and this guy, the next guy is also a big guy. Um, it's Voracious Fell Beast. Mm-hmm. It is four and a black black flying when Voracious Fell Beast enters the battlefield. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Create a food token for each creature sacrificed this way. Makes a snack. Oh, we love a snack. We love a snack here. <laughs> <laughs> so very cool card. Totally works in a lot of different decks, but yep. not for me. I yeah yeah and this next one it, it is along the same lines. It's Null Spine Dragon. It's a seven mana dragon. When it enters the battlefield, you may discard your hand if you draw cards equal the damage dealt to target opponent this turn. So this could draw you a ton of cards, but it's also a seven drop that you're going to have to hard cast most of the time. Um, and I think in this deck, like you're just you just want to use like invest your mana into non creature spells so you can build your army so you can get this uh, orc synergy the goblin synergy in the deck moving. Um, and no spines expensive. Yeah. That's how it be. I will say there are a lot of really cool cards from Lord of the Rings set specifically that work great in mm-hmm. as as uh, upgrades for the precons, mm-hmm. but we don't usually include them because we cannot put a price point on them for the budget. So yeah. remember that of like, when I choose this, I can't really choose them because there's no price point that I can give you whether that is going to be mm. in the budget or out of budget because we do this before. Yeah. Um, they so don't have prices yet. They're perfect. <laughs> They're perfect just the way they are. They're little babies. <laughs> Priceless. But keep an eye uh, for on the actual set because there's mm-hmm. a lot of cool stuff because the mechanics are all built to work together. Surprise. I think yeah. they know what they're doing (laughs) (laughs) all right how do you imagine this deck playing out so we've we've taken 10 cards uh, away we've added 10 cards in their place what do you like what does the perfect execution of the plan look like to you perfect execution of the plan 
Yes. Play your commander. Mm -hmm. Step one. <laughs> yeah, get him out there for sure. Step two, play some really cool instants or sorceries so mm -hmm. you can amass. Or enchantments and or artifacts. Or enchant There's enchantments, tons artifacts. Too. There's tons of artifacts in the actual um, mm -hmm. deck itself. Cast those, amass. Yep. Swing with your really, really big army tokens. Now, remember, without Maskwood Nexus out, you yeah. only get one army token. Yeah, just one, one big army. army. Yeah. But when that thing's a 13-13... You gotta block it. <laughs> you, you have to block it. It starts chipping away at people's boards, for sure. Yeah, yeah. so you want to make your army tokens, swing out with them, cast really fun instants and sorceries mm -hmm. and artifacts to make those those armies yeah and when the table turns against you you got plenty of recursive recursive pieces to mm -hmm. do as the bad guys do which is a rise from the grave and not to mention your army tokens have ward too yeah so your enemies are going to have to work a little harder to be able to target them mm -hmm. yeah it's, uh, they're going to be harder to Maze of it. <laughs> you're going to have to pay for that. <laughs> you got to pay two extra for that. You can't pretty, just leave Maze of it open. Pretty good. I love this upgrade. I think this deck is going to be a ton of fun to play. And I, you can really tell that Wizards focused on, like, if we're building the bad guy deck, it's going to do bad guy things. Yes. Like, there's a Notion Thief in the deck. It's There's a lot of edict effects. It's like, they're... It, it should feel like a Grixis evil plot. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of cool cards that really make it feel like, you know, you're the you're the big bad. Yeah. It's and cool. we only talk about obviously things that are coming in and going out. But if please take a look at the deck list. Mm. There are so many cool cards in here that you feel like the bad guy, you know, there yeah. there is the the uh, Lord of the Nazgul. Like there yeah. are really, really cool uh, cards in there that make you feel like you you could maybe destroy some worlds. <laughs> yeah, destroy your friends' worlds. Host some Mordor. <laughs> Tagline. If, if you saw any cards today that you're like, oh my god, I need that card for my deck, or you want to build this deck, you want to build the precon, you want to buy the precon, and then execute this upgrade, go to cardkingdom.com slash command to get sealed product for Lord of the Rings. This set looks awesome. Uh, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan and every single card just makes me giggle. And they they really worked hard on building flavorful, meaningful cards. And uh, Card Kingdom has a great selection of them. And if you are excited like me and you're going to buy 100 cards all at once, Card Kingdom is is the perfect place to do it because they're all going to show up safely on your doorstep packaged in a way that you know that your cards are protected and are getting delivered to you professionally and you know it's not going to get stuffed in your mailbox and bent in half uh, so love card kingdom please support them and support the show by using the affiliate link cardkingdom.com slash command uh, you can also use our affiliate link over at ultrapro.com slash command. Ultrapro makes some of the best accessories for magic in the biz. They keep your cards safe and organized and beautiful. Uh, again, if you're excited about Lord of the Rings, go check the Ultrapro website because they are going to have a fresh set of cool art from this set. And they've made, like, they must have made more art for this set than many many sets previous because there's like a thousand new cards i think the only other one that maybe has as much new art was another universe beyond like right it would have been like warhammer yeah then but this has a full main set so yeah which like, is more than that so yeah i there's so much new art for this set specifically and ultra pro has the rights to the official magic art which means you can get official magic art on your cool stuff uh, again support the show and Pick up some high quality magic accessories at ultrapro.com slash command. Boom. All right. These episodes. Oh, no, 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 no. no don't you forget. We have time. I was prepared. We're doing an end step. We're going to talk about something cool outside of the world of magic. What, uh, what are you enjoying right now? What am I enjoying? What are you well, about? I've, I've enjoyed, I'm excited about Lord of the Rings. And yeah. I mean, maybe everybody's sick of hearing about it. But what I will say is I'm so excited about Lord of the Rings. My end step is going to be about Hobbiton. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, I've been to New Zealand twice. Uh, Jealous. <laughs> it's amazing. It's so beautiful. But I did get to go to Hobbiton twice so i've seen i it love that you went back that's so, so many times i have so many <laughs> pictures so if you are a fan of the books and a fan of the movies 
you can go to New Zealand and you can look at all of that stuff yourself. You can see hobbit holes. You can see the farms. You can see the trees that they made. Like you, it is a full on experience. I've gone in the spring and I've gone in the fall. Mm Mm-hmm. And then at the very end, you get to go to the Green Dragon Inn. Cool. Uh, and it's this beautiful little tavern set on a lake. And they made a Green Dragon Inn card. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, you can go there and you can get little snacks and you can get mead and you can get all this little fun stuff. It's so wholesome. And it is really, really wholesome. And the guides are super educated. Mm-hmm. It is set on the green rolling hills in New Zealand. There's sheep everywhere and (laughs) you genuinely feel like you're in the movie or the scenes that you've you've read in the books Mm -hmm. and it is like mind-blowingly beautiful anybody i've ever talked to that has been like i'm going to do that like you better go to hobbiton um they have little of of course souvenir uh stores so you can get all kinds of exclusive stuff from there beforehand and if you get a chance to Please go because Mm -hmm. I had the time of my life. I had so much fun. I went twice. And so uh, you get to take pictures in one of the little hobbit holes. Like you get to go into it and it's, it's really, really cool. And then there's the sign and you get to see um, Bilbo's house Mm -hmm. and there's the party sign. And so, yeah, that's my end step is Hobbiton. So gotta go. That's so fun. I, uh, I've always wanted to get over there and I mean, New Zealand is such a beautiful country on its own, let alone on this like unbelievable set. That's a part of an iconic and thing. Sub, 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 sub end step is, yeah. Um, along with that is Weta Workshop did a lot of the um, costuming and things like that. Mm. So in New Zealand, they also have the Weta Workshop where you can go and you can see the miniature model scale Ooh, models that they cool. used in Lord of the Rings and some of the stuff there as well. So yeah, I love that. I've New Zealand, 10 out of 10 would go a third I- time. <laughs> <laughs> would Hobbiton again. Uh, these episodes are completely impossible without our amazing team here at the Command Zone and our support from our patrons. So thank you guys. But uh, we don't want to say thank you to our team. It, thank you to Craig Blanchett, Damon Lentz, Arthur Metograph, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jake Boss, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Graf Galati, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limberger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yep, Eric Lem, Josh Lee Quiet, Jimmy Wong, and Lady Danger and for Rachel doing this. Week sweet. Too. Yeah, and also me. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to do this upgrade. It's always so fun to see what people do with their new decks. And this one's a Especially bad to the bone. Yeah. This precon is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Thanks, guys. guys. Peace. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>